my son and his beautiful wife and our beautiful granddaughter and my other grandchildren, my other three grandchildren, Lily, Cash, and Jackson, and Olivia. I hope they're all having fun today and getting to see some fireworks. I hope maybe they'll drop by and see us on chat today. I don't know. They haven't yet, but they will. So today we're putting on some more of our famous silent movie music for background background noise. Uh, I think we've added a few more uh, film scores to our repertoire so we don't have to listen to Safety Last every week. Hey, what's up, Joanna? First time you've come. Yeah. Or is that is that my son using Joanna's... Oh... Yo, happy, ah, happy, happy fourth. fourth, guys. Happy fourth to you guys, too. I hope that you're having a good day. And I hope that uh, Olivia and the other kids may get a chance to see some fireworks today. My, uh, my niece and her husband bought a bunch of fireworks. I'm going to be heading over there later. She says, I'm Joanna. <laughs> okay, thank you for clarifying that. And uh, that's uh, usually you don't call. I've never heard you call me Pop before, but that's fine. We're growing. Yeah, no, it's good. Welcome to the show. I'm gonna turn on some music. We got we we got uh, 1917 Rough House. 19, Rough House. That's a comedy. 1926. Buster Keaton, the General, 1928, Buster Keaton, Steamboat Bill, 1927, Buster Keaton, College. I'm just going to click play and let it rip. Let it rip. Yeah, I go by many names, Joanna. It's the Jacob Boone. If you saw him, you'd know what that means. Anything but late for dinner. Nice of you to come by and say hello. Always glad to have you. We're here every Sunday. Little, well, most every Sunday. A little good vibe warm up before the get together. We're going to take this drawing from pencil to ink to color today. At least that's the intention. That's the intention. I know we'll probably get the first two parts done for sure. I don't know about the coloring, but that shouldn't be hard to color Captain America. 
Red, white, and blue. Which Ooh. I am wearing a red, white, and blue shirt. It's the only one I had to wear. I had to borrow it from my my roommate. Yeah, uh, and I didn't have a patriotic shirt to wear today. I wish I did. Or one with Captain America on it. Would have been cool too. I'm glad you agree, Sierra. What's that? What's she agree about? I say it's an appropriate drawing for the occasion, she says. Happy for it. Thank you, Sierra. You're right. It is appropriate, and I appreciate your comments. It's a red, white, and blue kind of day. Indeed.
So Captain America was created in uh, 1941, right as we entered World War II. And uh, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon, another great gifted Golden Age artist, uh, illustrator, writer, came up with the character. And he was a big hit. And his, his comics sold very well during the war. Uh, anything pro-American sold yeah, good during uh, the war. Back then, uh, yeah, the, uh, the anti-Nazi sentiment was very, very widespread. And Captain America answered that call even a, a little bit more than uh, Superman or Batman, even though they utilized them as well it, it, to, uh, to help sell war bonds and uh, promote the, uh, the war effort. Of course, character like Superman, it's been argued that a character like Superman could easily have just gone over there and won the war. And they couldn't actually come out and say that kind of thing and do that kind of thing in a comic book because that was under, it would undermine the actual effort of our men in uniform at the time. So they just basically used them for propaganda purposes. <coughs> and it worked. It's that P word.
I'll work on that a bit. That shield looks pretty difficult. It is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get it right. Concentric rings, they all have to match each other, right? More or less. Yeah. Well, I bet that artist had a lot of fun drawing that thousands of times. Well, he he was so good at it. I mean, he he, he just understood it. He understood it. I bet he had a little cheat method. He probably did. I probably had some special, like, egg-shaped rings. Like, egg-shaped... Uh, yeah, yeah. Stencils or... Right, right. Okay, but I'm just... I'm, I wonder if I'm, I'm winging it, and it. Go back and analyze I'm going to go clean it up uh, as I go. <laughs> so, I'm not trying to criticize No, that's okay, man. I understand where you're coming from. It's not... A, it's got to look right. trying to draw that star on perspective as well that's like mm -hmm. perspective to the fifth power it definitely is forced perspective for sure Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Whoops, we got back. Thank you. 
that one like right back at you Nick hey thank you Nicholas thank you buddy I'm sorry you left your phone and, uh, you should have shouldn't have left your phone I guess huh oh. it happens to the best of us my friend but happy fourth to you guys I appreciate you coming by my niece's house later and watch some fireworks. They spent a bunch of money on fireworks, which, yeah, you know, you know, wish I had a bunch of money to spend on fireworks, you know, you know, whatever. It would be nice, huh?
Keep it down. When I was a wee lad. Who was it? Work. Bottle cap launchers. Wood and metal tubes. <laughs> ah, that's pretty smart. Yeah. Bottle rocket plus metal tube equals bottle rocket gun. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> You'd be fine though, man. Just get your face mask or at least some goggles. Leather jacket. <laughs> you could use Roman candles. <laughs> I'm gonna wash the hands, Mike. I know. Just thinking that. Get this uh this excess pencils shit off first. Just uh, another advantage to uh, digital art. No dirty hands. That's true. Who said that? Uh, you, me. It, oh, that's you. <laughs> okay. You're right. But you know what? When you take these drawings and put them in the computer, you can enhance them even more. Uh, oh, yeah. So, you know, I, I, just, just, I just enjoy the process of putting together the... I'm a 21st century digital boy. I, I don't like... I don't know if I'm going to really enjoy drawing with a mouse. Well, no. Or a, see, or a, that's why they make the, the tablet. Yeah. Where you actually have a, a pencil, a stylus. And yeah, it works stylus. like a brush or a pen or a pencil or a marker or whichever a stamp, whichever tool you have selected. I, I'd like to try that. I really would see, like to see how, how, I, how I fare with that. As long as I get the same results, I'll be happy. Just cost money. We gotta start a fund. Yeah. Artist tablet fund. You would love it though, man. It would fit right there on your table, and it's just a, a digital piece of paper. You know what I mean? You have to watch the screen. You know. Yeah. But it feels just. I'm not speaking from experience, but holding the stylus in your hand and looking at the screen. Whatever. I'll shut up. Oh, you're cool, man. It's. But a good I understand. One, man. I understand what you're so, saying. The cheap ones are small. I don't like the one. I can't. I yeah, gotta have yeah. A, I you gotta need have a large huge one. one. You need a huge one. Those and it's gonna cost a fortune. Those are expensive. Well, it's not in the Mike Jones draws budget at the moment, but eventually, like all other things that we have obtained over time, True. we will find a way to get it. Yeah, we've come a long way from day one, haven't we? I think so.
Nah, I don't like that. I'm not putting that in there because I don't think his I don't think his hands would go with that far. I think that's a mistake in the drawing. Yes, I was criticizing Jack a little bit. Alrighty, just about there. Closer. I think when I ink this, I'll fix it. Okay, the Jack Kirby-ish trappings are there. All I need now is to add the thousands of little chainmail looking stuff and ink it. Um, And we have Star Spangled Avenger here. <laughs> Looking pretty good. Yeah, it is. Looking um, passable. The shield is always an issue when you're drawing it, like they say, like in perspective. It. Uh, All right, you've got Captain America. You can do a little close-up of that. And we make, I could, I guess I could add the words Captain America up here. Get 
do that. Can you add letters? I could. You got plenty of time right now, don't we? Well. Yeah, you know, just draw, I'll finish the drawing, and maybe add letters later. Make a flag. I was gonna make a flag here behind him. I see that? Huh? I see that? I figured that one out. Take it what? Say I figured that one out. Your shape behind him. That's mm. the flag. Shouldn't? On the top of the flagpole? It's just a pole, just a ball, right? It should be an eagle. An eagle? Oh. <laughs> I need to let you draw and shut up. You know, sometimes I think that's a good idea. I'm gonna take a couple of minutes, go clean my hands up with all this smudgery, and uh, we'll start, we'll come back to it. That's uh, cap and pencil, more or less, for a quickie. Not bad. Not too shabby.
All right, we're back, and we're doing a drawing of Captain America in sort of a, in a Jack Kirby-esque style from one of his classic poses. And there's something wrong with it. There's something wrong with it, and I think it's the shield. Yeah, the leg too. Legs should be up higher and smaller. Yep. Yep, that would make it make a big difference. Okay. So I think I'm gonna do that. Change that. Yeah, the leg should be way up here. That's all right, we'll just use the same leg and when I ink it, I'm gonna go to light table mode now and I'm gonna ink the character, ink the figure.
Hand me my scissors, please. Where are your scissors? And right over there in that cup. Thank you.
There you go. We didn't even have to summon him this time, Mike. Scotty. <laughs> yes, sir. Scotty! He says, Happy Fourth. Happy Don't Fourth to you, my friend. Throw that mighty shield. And Captain America throws his mighty shield, right? All of those who oppose his shield must yield. Hope you're having a nice Sunday. We're just chilling out and enjoying a little bit, having fun, like we always do. Thought it'd be appropriate to draw a picture of the shield slinger today. Since I always like to look for an excuse to draw superheroes.
I like this music. Yeah, not bad. I think I'm just going to use color on this thing to make the color separations and Thank you. 
Uh. What? Kirby's here. What's the matter? Kirby's here. Oh, okay. I'm just going to use some simple markers on this today so we can whip it out because I want to be getting back to the Scarlet Mutton. I started some new pages and I'm anxious to get them completed. Thank you. 
Hey, back. Okay, let's see what we can do with this blue. Let's see which blue will be appropriate. This blue, probably. than you expected it, didn't it? It's going along quick, that's for sure. Normally it takes us a while to go through each phase. Well, this is, you know, Captain America, I mean, it's not terribly difficult to draw. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, not I mean, I'm, I'm trying to do it. Kirby justice, but I mean, I mean, I'll never do Kirby complete justice. He's, he's uh, a lot of people imitate him copy him and I've been drawing Kirby stuff for years and it's still hard to capture that certain magic he has with his characters. Pens color pretty good. They just Okay, there's our cap. And let's see what else we can do to him. Oh yes.
darker blue. I think we're back out of here. This will be our quickie of the day. Captain America shindig. Yep. 
Doing a little cap. Uh, I was going to put a flag behind him, but I don't think I'm going to mess with that because I want to get back to the comic. But uh, it's not a bad, this is not a bad uh, little quick drawing of cap. Well, happy 4th. Happy 4th of July, Brian. Thanks for coming over, man. Hope things are going well for you. Nice day for a drawing, huh? How your how's your work coming along? All right, well that's it. We had our sketch. We had our sketch here, and we turned it into this. And there you have it, folks. Captain America. Oh wait, I think I do see you something that needs to be. He says you might stop by if that's cool. Oh, no, that's fine, man. You're more than welcome, you know that. Um, well, I got a couple pages that I started working on uh, yesterday that I kind of want to touch up on, and uh, maybe I might just get a real page laid out. I mean, get a real page, get to the lay, uh, do the secondary layout on on a real page, and actually do another page and do a little more inking today um, before we add the uh, letters. Of course, you know, I think people like to see that process I think wait what evil Batman Brian there's an evil Batman they've corrupted Batman what you talking about he says, I want to draw this current evil Batman going on in DC. Oh, yeah, I've seen him. He looks rather interesting. Sounds like might be a fun one to do. Oh, okay. Well, I got you. Alternate realities. Oh, yeah, okay. Sort of DC's answer to, like, what if series that Marvel did? He says, he, he used to like that a lot. DC Universe versus all the evil Batmans of the Dark Universes. I see. Hmm. I didn't realize there were that many. I, I remember this one character that was really weird back in the day. Uh, I don't know if they, if you've ever heard of him. Uh, he was called. Uh, it was a, a villain that Superman and Batman both fought together in uh, the pages of World's Finest, which was the comic that they shared. Uh, and it was um, a character called <laughs> the Composite Superman, and he was he's half he was half Superman and half Batman in his costume. It was, but he was a darker, darker shade. And of course, he was evil. He had Superman's powers and Batman's gadgets, and uh, he could fight. And he, I remember, he gave them a really hard time. But I thought it was a weird looking character. Or somebody just said, "I can't think." I mean, the guy must have been thinking. It's hard to come up with a villain for both Superman and Batman to fight, so... Hey, why don't we just make a Batman and Superman combined? And, made it, and that's what they did. And literally, his costume was half... Half Superman and half Batman. No. It was bizarre. And that was back in the 60s. I'm sure you probably never saw that. I don't know if they ever brought that character back. Anyway, we got this one whipped out. Oh, wow. Boom. It's whipped out. Look at that. 
killer, Dad. You like it? It's killer. Hey, it kind of matches your shirt. It does. I wish I had him on my shirt. <laughs> anyway, we did this first, we did this first, and then we... I was going to add uh, Captain America words here and maybe draw a flag behind him. But I don't want to go into all that. I'll do that. I'll, I'll add that on my own and I'll, maybe I'll show it to you guys uh, next week or when I get it done. But anyway, I just wanted to get the cap, cap knocked out today in honor of uh, 4th of July. Yeah, he's uh, probably the most patriotic. The first Avenger. He's the first Avenger and he is the most patriotic superhero I think ever created. That it basically wears a flag on his body. Yes. You know, so... And uh, yeah, he was a, a hero of World War II. And they decided to bring him back. Funny thing about Captain America's history, when, after the war ended, uh, superheroes, the exception of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and I, and uh, were, they were the only superheroes that were being published. They, they they dropped a lot of the superheroes in the in the late forties, early fifties, and Captain America was one of the strips that got dropped. And uh, he went into limbo for a while. Uh, I, I think they did print. They did some. I think it was like 1953 or something that they finally just like let him go for a while. And then later, when Stan Lee was launching the new Marvel comics, after he'd had successes with Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, and the Hulk, uh, and then and then about 1960, I want to say 64, he launched the Avengers. He and and Captain America spearheaded that that group and he brought him back from the dead by creating a story where he was frozen in the ice uh since world war ii and then he's thought out he's a man out of time that's the storyline that we see in the marvel movies and it's it's a it's a good it made, it made him a much more interesting character than he was originally i think um uh, and uh he became the leader of the avengers and to great success uh he has remained with us. He got his own magazine again, I believe. Well, he was featured in Tales of Suspense with Iron Man. There was you got two. Uh, he wasn't with Iron Man, but they, they did an Iron Man story and a Captain America story in each issue. And then later, uh, sales proved out to be so good that they uh, they gave him his own magazine and Iron Man too in 1968. Beginning with uh, issue 100 of Tales of Suspense, they turned it into Captain America, the unofficial number one, which years ago, I, I wanted to show you guys this. Years ago, I did a little painting. This is a painting. Okay. I don't know if you can see this very well. This is a painting I did. Uh, it's on a very hard board. So an acrylic, and then I inked it with a brush, not a Sharpie, Scotty. <laughs> inked it with a brush, and uh, it was my uh, ode to Jack Kirby at the time. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job of recreating that cover. Uh, this is drawn by Jack Kirby, of course, but it was inked by a, a, an embellisher named uh, Sid Shores, who I always thought was a good inker on Kirby. I, uh, I just liked the way he did it. And I just uh, changed a, a few things. I added actual text to this supposed newspaper. It's not a newspaper here. It's I took a book, uh, uh, one of the Marvel books about Jack Kirby and Captain America, and I made some copies of the pages, and I cut them up and I pasted them actual actual pages of information here about Captain America and Jack Kirby over here, so you can actually read about them on it. Unfortunately, when uh, I stored it, um, we had a little bit of a flood, and some of my artwork got damaged in the flood. And this 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 piece didn't get water damage, but it got it got scuffed up somehow, and some of the the indicia here the uh, got compromised. So I'm gonna remake it. I have another one that I started, which I think I could probably dig out if I find it. 
Okay, we'll see you soon, Brian. Yeah, Brian, come on by, bro. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. Now, this one is the same piece, only it's not quite as far along as you can see. And they, this is where they all start. This is where all those painted pieces start. They start with the base colors. And then I ink them. Um, and this, of course, hasn't got any newspaper on it yet either. Uh, all of that information came from uh, from this this page of, the, of, a, of a book of uh, uh, the, uh, some, a comic book heroes uh, history kind of a book that I have. And uh, I just kind of made my made made copies of these of the information here, and then uh, and then. You, Cut it up so it could paste to do a, actually a kind of a paste up on this, and I'm going to finish this. And I think I'm going to I think maybe I should get back to this and start working on it because I'd like to redo it and make a nice clean version of it, you know, and uh, and then hang it up on my wall because I've always wanted to have it on my wall. But a long time ago. I opted, I, I made a decision not to do any more uh, cover recreations because I couldn't really sell them because they're not my work. Uh, I enjoy looking at them and I enjoy doing them. I, I, I love, uh, they're great exercises in drawing, that's for sure, but I'd rather do things that I'm, uh, that I have created out of my own head. And uh, while they may not be as fantastic as some of the other stuff, uh, that's out there right now. Uh, it's still my stuff, and and I'd like to be taken on my own merits, you know. Even though drawing this kind of stuff is just is just absolutely a lot of fun. It's a it's a blast to draw these characters like this. So I'd like to thank you all for uh, checking me out today and watching this. Uh, I don't think we're gonna quit yet, um, unless what time is it? Five thirty-five. And Brian's on his way. Now let's get a close-up of that, um, and we're going to take a quick five. Take a quick five, and uh, let everybody take a gander at that for a little while. And we'll be back in just a few short minutes, and to see what other kind of uh, trouble we can get ourselves into. Thanks for joining us today. Mike Jones of Mike Jones Draws.
Hey, we're back. Sorry about that. <coughs> you just finished up this Captain America piece twice. And it'll go into the portfolio. Or I might just send it send it to my grandson. I think he'd like it. Well, I was gonna start working on some new pages. I've already started a couple more layouts. I wanted to finish this one, this double page spread out. And I'll probably do that tonight. And I got tomorrow off, believe it or not. But our boss was kind enough to give us the day off tomorrow with pay. Since the 4th landed on a Sunday, he thought he'd give us a, day, a free day. <coughs> Which is really wonderful because that gives me a lot of time to work on this that I need. I always maintained that this would be done by now if we had if I was if I had every day to work on it. But I only have like a day, a day and a half usually in the week to devote to it. 
And that's why it's taking so long. You figure about 30, 30, 35 Sundays equates out to 35 days, which is probably what it would take normally to do an issue of a comic, a 20, 22 page story, about 30 days. <coughs> I think that's what the professionals get when they're on a deadline for publishing. But since we're not really on any kind of deadline except what we create for ourselves, uh, we can take our time and do this correctly. Now, Organic. Should it take off, or if somebody likes it, then I uh, may have to be uh, forced to do do more quicker. In which, uh, you know, but if I don't, you know, it all depends on the money. If I have the money, if I'm offered any money at all, then it makes uh, that I can take time off from my other job, my second job, and and uh, devote more time to it. But uh, today, I, do, I wanted to work on this, but I think we're going to cut the broadcast short again today because uh, it is the 4th, and uh, I think we're going to just spend a little quality time with the family and festivities beginning soon. And hang out. But Thanksgiving's coming up too, isn't it? Festivities. Oh, oh, oh festivities. Beginning soon. Yes, the festivities begin. Yeah, it is. It's Sunday, and... Uh, you know, uh, if the even if it was Christmas Day, I would be doing this on Sunday. I don't care, I, 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 you know, because this is uh, this is what we we, do, we devoted ourselves to Sunday. Sunday is Mike Jones Draws Day, and I don't care what the, what's going on. That's right. Unless it's a family emergency of some kind, or I'm deathly ill, right? Or I'm on vacation. Those are about the only reasons why I wouldn't be here. Right. So. We're glad you guys came to visit. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our little drawing of Cap. We'll show it to you one more time. Quick little sketch of a Jack Kirby-esque Captain America. Not not nearly. Actually, I, I, there's a couple of refinements I'd like to make on it, but it's 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 good enough for what we did today, and it's 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 in the spirit, an homage to Jack and an homage to the character. And an homage to the U.S.A. And an homage to the U.S.A., the good old U.S. of A., which I'm proud to say I was a member of the Armed Forces. I still am a Marine. I once a Marine, always a Marine. Uh, former Marine, I guess you might say. Retired. It was many years ago. But I served, I served, you know, I served uh, my country. And uh, I think uh, we have it pretty good here. If, and... Uh, there's always improvements that can be made naturally, and there are some rough spots in uh, in, in America right now. But uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to work through that and 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 try to try to build uh, the country that we, we we all imagined and wanted America to be. Um. Anyway, I'm not. I don't, I don't get political here at Mike Jones Draws. Um, because that's a sure way to lose friends. <laughs> but uh, I am uh, I am proud to be a United States citizen, and a lot of men did die for the rights that we have today. And uh, we got to remember that, and uh, and uh, be uh, be respectful of of what they wanted, and try to achieve that. That was a dream that they had for this country. And they didn't get to see it, and their grandchildren and and their children get to see it, and and we we have we don't we have no right to ruin it. We have to maintain it for their sake. All right, that's enough of that. We're gonna call it a day a day today, and uh, thanks again for everybody uh, to everyone for coming. Uh, Scotty, I always love to see you. Brian, uh, Nicholas, Joanna, and and, and the little one. I love you all so much. Uh, we'll be back next week and be working on the mutton again or possibly another power symbol because I got four more, I think, what, three more to do. Um, we're still working out a way to figure out just the best way to color those. But I think I can get them all inked and uh, that'll be something for me to do. In the meantime, the scholar mutton is still on the, on the, on the prowl and hopefully we'll be able to get that to, to a point where we can show you some some significant uh what's what i'm looking for some finished work yeah I'll show you the finished comic you know but i really don't want to I, I, 
I'm kind of weird about that. I, I wonder if it's okay, if it's a good idea to show everything up front. Before, otherwise, why would they have to read it if they already know what it is? You know, it just takes away from the surprise. Because not everybody who's not everybody is present. True, you're right. I don't have a big audience yet. All right. Well, thanks for watching. This is Mike Jones and the Jacoboon saying happy 4th of July, happy Sunday, and we hope to see you again next week. Keep your pencil sharp and keep drawing. Until then, take care. Happy 4th. Adios, Gordon Stuntman. Adios to all of my friends and amigos.